Well, hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel and it's great to have you back and it's great to see you all again. And I have had a lot of requests to make a video upon microbiology and pathology, like how to approach it, some tips on how to write the exam, how to write your answers, how to study it, how to score well in these subjects of second year. So I am going to take that up today and make a video about microbiology, especially microbiology today. So let's get on with it. But uh, before we begin, I just wanted to address a small tiny thing. Uh, you guys really don't have to call me mom. You can just address me by my name. This is one thing that I've been doing in college as well. I do not let any of the juniors refer to me or address me as mom. And I'd like to follow that on this platform as well. So it's okay. Be comfortable. Just uh, refer to me by my name. It's okay. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Anyway, without any further ado, let's get on with this video and let's discuss everything that you need to know about microbiology. As I know your exams are approaching, your final exams are approaching, and I'm pretty sure the dates came out very recently as well. So I'm going to just give you a small tips, help you in order to help, uh, make it better for you to be able to study in the last few months for your exam. So what we're going to discuss in this video is which books you're going to use, which books are essential, what is important for you and how to make notes, how to go about note making or if it's really important, what you need to include in it and how to go about revision and how to study lab diagnosis part of lab uh, microbiology. I know this is the one that students really struggle with and how to deal with diagrams in microbiology. So let's cover all of these things in this video. So starting with what books you need to refer to for microbiology, what I suggest to you and what I have told over and over again is one and only Apurva Shastri. So I uh, suggest you to stick to this one book. Do not keep switching books for microbiology because it might really confuse your mind. You might not know what to study. So just stick to this one book. It's the standard book that most students follow in India. So I think it's good and I think it's uh, adequate for what you need to know and how you need to study for your uh, professional exams. So this is one book that I suggest you to buy and suggest you to read. And apart from this, uh, I know students say that uh, Singhi is not uh, adequate for uh, microbiology because it's not updated to the version we are studying now because it's in according to bacteriology, parasitology, virology. But the 17th edition of uh, Singhi has come out, that is for second year of MBBS, in which it is updated and all the microbiology questions can be referred to and it's actually good. So I suggest you to buy the Singhi book as well. So these are the two books that you need for microbiology for now and I think that's good enough. Well, first things first, uh, know the division in your paper 1 and paper 2, which chapters, which systems come under paper 1 and paper 2. So it's easier for you to approach it and easier for you to study accordingly. So what you need to do is study systemic uh, wise, like cardiovascular system, respiratory system, urogenital system, central nervous system, however it's given in the textbook. So apart from these systems, you I su suggest you to not neglect immunology as well as the general part of uh, microbiology. These contain... Uh, a lot of marks as well and also the zoonotic infections that come in the last that is included in paper 2 these are the uh, topics that students should not uh, tend to miss or neglect and these carry a lot of marks too so give attention to these subjects these topics as well and moving on to note taking i am not sure how how much of an extent note taking might help you in microbiology what i really think is repeated revision repeated revision is what helps in micro but what i did was i did make notes but this helped me only before my internals that's when like when you're studying everything newly and then you have to just one day before you are not able to study the whole thing from the textbook so this is when the notes came in handy and also notes help in your practice like you'll help retain all the things better. So this is the only reason why I made notes and I will share them with you. Uh, I'll just put it uh, link in my description so you can check it out too. So about note making, this is what I think. Uh, but what I think you can do with note making is uh, start when you take up each topic, you need to make notes starting with the pathogen uh, pathogenesis and the picture of the virus or the bacteria if it's there like the structure and all the details about the structure and then coming to lab diagnosis, the main real deal of microbiology and then uh, end it with clinical features if necessary and management. So this is how you need to make notes and this is how you'll also replicate it in your answer paper. So this is the method you need to follow. 
and one more way of notes that i made was uh, is as follows i'll just show you this is how i made notes just based on just the diagrams so wherever i used to see diagrams in the textbooks those are the ones i used to write down and practice so when it comes to immunology there are a lot of diagrams such as the events in inflammatory response starting with that and the primary and secondary graphs uh, the immune response graphs and that um, structure of antibody all these things i used to just make notes separately only diagram notes so this is what comes in handy and usually you can just write it easily uh, when you have the diagram with you in hand so i think this is also a very high yielding yielding tip so when you make notes make sure you practice each diagram that's in the textbook and one more thing that i did for my preparation was make these flash cards especially for the organisms for the diseases that have a really important and extensive lab diagnosis so i just made uh, flash cards as so for several diseases so this uh, really kept in handy and this i could keep revising just in my hand you know i didn't have to keep opening the opening the textbook so i think if you can follow this method and if it's good for you i think do do it it helps microbiology especially in the last minute when you're preparing and it helps you recollect and remember and retain all these uh, small small information as well so do this and it will be good for you and talking about microbiology when it's nearing your exam when your exams are nearing when you have just one or two months left in hand so what you really need to do is you maybe you're not able to study everything word by word and what is very important for microbiology especially is revision so i cannot stress this enough so many times you might not have done many minor topics so i suggest instead of spending so much time on those you repeatedly revise all the major topics so this is what mostly will come in the paper and since you have singhi now with you uh, do uh, see what are the questions that have been repeated in your rs4 or whatever uh, the new scheme so you can keep revi revising the same topics over and over again so, and if you uh, think discussing with someone with a friend or with your family any any sibling anyone uh, do it it helps you retain it and uh, memorize it even better so i think this is extremely important for micro that is repeated 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 revision of the major topics that you know are going to be a short short question in your question paper so do it and i'm pretty sure you're going to retain it and you're going to score really amazing and how you can go about revising is again under the same topics that, that is pathogenesis the structure uh, the viral replication if there's any process of replication and its uh, course of the disease clinical features it's not really important but you can include it and especially the lab diagnosis so these this is how you can keep revising and what i did just for the exam is i used to have a spare rough note and i used to keep writing the things over and over again it's not like a formal note making but the way i used to write it used to help me remember better so i used to keep practicing those diagrams keep practicing major major points major points in the lab diagnosis the culture which culture is used for what organism those things i used to keep writing over and over again and this is how you can go about revision and you just need to space out uh, all your uh, subjects and topics uh, as uh, uh, comfortable for you so just take uh, cvs for around 4 days and then cns for around 3 to 4 days and then go over it again when you have time so make sure you have at least one or two rounds of revision before you face the exams okay after the revision part let me come to the main part that is the lab diagnosis i have made a short video upon how you can approach lab diagnosis of micro and i'm just going to go over it again you need to study lab diagnosis under these headings and this is how it will make it easier that you need to know that oh i need to write under these headings so you'll not forget any detail so start with sample collection or your specimen collection your microscopy where all your gene sustaining and staining everything come so you can e also draw it in the paper so you're supposed to draw these uh, staining pictures and the picture microscopic picture of the organism and after this comes your culture methods so all your culture methods specific culture methods come under this so after this comes your serological markers that's also extremely important in cases like typhoid or uh, hepatitis b so you need to know uh, serological markers as well and then your animal inoculation methods if there's any in cases of like leprosy if there's like a mouse foot pad in inoculation or guinea pig in inoculation in case of rabies so this is how you need to uh, know it under and the last one is a molecular test that's everyone's favorite so in every answer you can include pcr elisa pcr elisa back tag alert all those uh, molecular tests so in these headings you need to study lab diagnosis and you can write the paper also under these headings so it's easy and efficient
So again with learning lab diagnosis, the key is repeated revision and just repeated revision or you can make these flashcards or you can repeatedly write it down. So this is the only way you can learn lab diagnosis honestly. Uh, so do it and this is the main part of micro so do not neglect it and see all most of the questions will be write the lab diagnosis of hemophilus influenza, write the lab diagnosis of acute rheumatic pain. Everything is just mostly lab diagnosis so this is what you need to study. Uh, and pay most attention to. And now coming to the last part, which is also a very, very important part, is that diagrams. So how are you supposed to draw diagrams in microbiology, you might ask. So you know bacteriology, virology, parasitology, uh, and fungal. So how can you draw diagrams? So main thing what you need to draw is when you study, okay, this streptococcus, it is a gram-positive cocci. So when you study, you know it's a cocci. So just draw, draw a circle, draw with your hematoxylin and just draw cocci, just draw circle, circle, circle. So you, you have a diagram there, then and there itself. So then you can draw bacilli. And if it's a spirochete like Treponema pallidum, you can draw a spiral shaped organism, even though it might not be given in the textbook. This is how you can make diagrams on your own when you're studying. So you can just draw blood culture, just draw a red color, uh, a plate culture and then you can draw the uh, fermentation all the colonies that's uh, uh, bacterial colonies in the culture and this is how you can come up with so many diagrams and all the test diagrams such as ELISA there there have there are diagrams uh, and like capsular antigen detection all these diagrams are there in the textbook so make sure you inoculate them in your answers and do not forget to draw diagrams and so many other diagrams too you can draw uh, like fungal, you can draw the hyphae, candida, uh, do not forget all these things. And for uh, your parasite, mostly it's all stool specimens, so your stool microscopy. So you need to know the egg diagrams, like the ascari ascariasis egg. So this is how you need to remember to draw diagrams for each question that they ask. And virology, you can draw the viral model. Usually there is a viral model for most of the viruses. So you need to remember to draw these, the structure, capsule, capsule structure, antigens, the DNA or RNA, whether it is, and then you can label it and then you're done with your diagrams. So this is how you can try to make diagrams. So when you see a question in a question paper, you, you, you need to think in your mind. Okay, if they're, if they're asked about cholera, what can I draw possibly? So, you know, you can draw Stuart medium or uh, if it's if they ask about anaerobic organisms such as Clostridium perfringens, you can draw a Robert Co Robertson Cook meat broth diagram. So just like this, when you're studying, just think in your mind what diagrams you can draw as I just gave you examples. So this is how you, while in preparation, you need to know which diagrams, where you can draw. So this is not only beneficial for you to remember, but also for you to fetch extra marks in your question paper. So this is uh, a very high yielding tip for you to score more marks. That is to include diagrams in your uh, answers. So this is what the examiner usually sees. And apart from uh, diagrams, you can also draw a lot of flow charts such as coming to complement system, you can draw the complement like in a flowchart way. Or like when you're writing about the pathogenesis, write in a flowchart way. I'll just give you examples in my notes. And coming to lab diagnosis, again, you can draw the lab diagnosis flowchart. And this is how you can make your answer sheet more appealing and more attractive and more, uh, you know, that they know that you know what to write and more just to the point. So this is how you need to approach with diagrams and how you need to include them in your paper. So this is basically all you need to know about microbiology. And one more main thing you need to do is uh, space out your revision in the last one or two months before your exams properly, adequately. Make sure you have enough time for revision even though you have not completed so many things. Make sure you revise the things that you know because uh, what's the use if you do not remember the things that you know in uh, while studying the things that you don't know. So make sure you try to revise as much as possible. Try to write down as much as possible and I'm pretty sure you'll score really, really, really well in your professional exams. And that's it for this video and I will make a video for pathology. Just uh, give me a, like two weeks time and I'm pretty sure and I'm really sure that it'll be worth it. And thank you so much for your patience. I will make a really good video that will help you guys for pathology as well. So apart from that, uh, I really hope you did like this video and did benefit from it even a little bit. And if you did, do give, give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. And if you have any further suggestions, do let me know in the comment down uh, comment box down below. I'll do my best to make it happen and do my best to help you guys out in any way possible. And until next video, take care and bye bye.